You ready for this? Of course I'm ready. Nice and easy. Textbook cop. What's the play? Vote for choices by moving your pointer inside the box. Welcome to Hidden Agenda. I'm gonna play this game like an idiot. I'm the glue walker. Gonna get everyone killed whenever I can. Keep the lights on. Please. Let's split up. Search for the clue shown at the top of the screen. Use your pointer to highlight the clues before the timer runs out. Some of these clues could help you in the future, so try to find them all. Uh, I have to find a bag. Um. all of them I guess I think they're gonna die. Hands up, hands up now! To shoot, move your pointer onto the target. Think before you shoot. You do not have to open fire. I wanna open fire. Hands behind your head, no sudden moves. Kill him. Yeah. Where's my cursor? Oh, wait, after it with this. Yeah. Yeah, you have to play the game with your phone. No, That's one death. The hunt for the trapper came to a dramatic end tonight as police from the third precinct arrested their primary suspect, Jonathan Finn. Finn is wanted in connection with a string of grisly murders that has gripped the city and claimed the lives of first response police officers. More on this story as it develops. Ladies and gentlemen, the accused Jonathan Finn is guilty. Of that there is no doubt. Your job is simply to determine how he is punished. This man, the so-called trapper killer, has terrorized our community with his brutal murder spree. Booby trapping his victims so our brave first responders became victims themselves. One such hero was Officer Tom Nelson, who died as he and his partner were making the arrest that brought us here today. Jonathan Finn has confessed to every single one of these crimes. Why? Because he hopes you will see him as a man, a fellow human being. But this is only another one of the Trapper's clever ploys. We cannot trust this man. He has a deceitful, twisted, villainous mind, and nothing he says or does will ever change that. I therefore recommend punishment to the full extent of the law, no less than the death penalty. Thank you. Jonathan Finn, for the crimes for which you have been found guilty, 
I hereby sentence you to death by lethal injection. This court is adjourned. Tap the logbook button on your app to read plot updates, view character biographies, and check the major ripple events affecting your story. I am Ray Weaver, and this is The Crawl. Let's kick it off tonight with our very own homegrown villain, Johnny Finn, The Trapper. Sucker's been on death row for five whole years. Mr. Trapper's only got 48 hours left on our big blue marble, so I thought, hey, did you know one of the victims? Phones are open. For the one, you're on. Hey, so... Well, yeah, man. I mean, in my point of view, like, they can't fry this son of a bitch hard enough, you know? I saw he got messed up as a kid. That's no excuse to take it out on our finest boys in blue. I hear you. But it ain't like our cops got the finest reputation, you know? Look at Marty for one. Promotion to homicide, metal, the works. This gal's on top of the world, and guess what? Turns out she's dirtier than the rest of us down here in the mud. Mishandling evidence, improper conduct, who knows what else? Damn! Guess you never know who's one of the good ones. I guess this game's more story based than anything. Another pair of John Doe's this weekend. We're quickly racking up red names on this board, and I gotta tell you, unsolved cases don't exactly uphold the reputation we've built here at this precinct. Just put Marnie the Magician on the case. I hear she's got a knack for making things disappear. Son Detective Calvary, pretend you didn't just say that. You're dismissed. Calvary get to you. Ever since he got internal affairs eyes on you, he acts like some kind of moral crusader. At this point, I just tune him out. Seriously? You doing all right? I'd be doing a lot better if Calvary would take a short walk off a tall building. I would keep your distance until all this inquiry bullshit blows over. Don't throw IA any bones. Gee, thanks, Mom. Detective Marnie, you have a word in my office? Look, Marnie, I'm not supposed to comment on an ongoing internal affairs investigation, but if it starts affecting my best detective... I'm sorry, sir. Hey, don't apologize. You're a good cop. I have no doubt you didn't do anything to compromise the crime scene intentionally. The facts will speak for themselves. Thank you for believing in me, sir. You know, it sometimes feels like we don't have a choice in these things, but you do. You got me? Yes, of course. I don't want to believe that. But I know the trap was set for execution in 48 hours. It's a heavy load. You know when you send someone to death row, I don't want you to be distracted. Knowing Jonathan Finn's about to make his exit is what gets me up in the morning, sir. Better than a cup of coffee. If you haven't noticed, we're going for the be a dick approach attempt in this game. Message. Heading to see your client now. Sorry I couldn't make it back to town. I'm not crazy about meeting Finn without his attorney present. I know. Thank you for talking to him so quickly. Well, he doesn't have much time left, does he? No, he doesn't. You want to give me a little preview? It would be kind of a tough nut to crack. Great. Any tips? You need to get him to talk about Adam Jones. Who's Adam Jones? Better you hear it from him. You got a plan? I know how to get what I need. Call you after.
Your attorney says you've got something you want to share with me? You've got five minutes. Piss round and I'm out of here. Miss Graves, I did not kill anybody. I used to blame God for what happened. At Las Palmas? The orphanage? We were just kids. We trusted them. But I've forgiven them now. God teaches us to forgive. You can't forgive your abusers once you've put them in the ground. Forgiveness doesn't work like that. I didn't kill anyone! Finn, calm down. Calm? I'm about to fucking die! And nobody will know the truth. What do you mean? What truth? I'm gonna die a liar. A dirty sin and liar. Truth about what? The confession, the murders, everything! Oh, so now you didn't kill them? The chaplain, the orderly? Then who did? Adam Jones? Adam was my friend at the orphanage. Things we'd been through together, who could blame him for killing us? Uh, okay. I'm listening, but you have to give me more to go on. Adam and I, we've seen some shit together. Makes you close. Adam escaped, and I found drugs. I was high from the moment I got out of there. Then, a couple of years later, a couple of centuries, hell if I know, Adam tracks me down online. And he keeps writing me and writing me and bringing up all that old shit from the orphanage. He says he knows exactly how to make him pay. So we made an arrangement. I wrap myself out, I take the heat off him, spend a couple of months in the clink, and then wham! Trapper strikes again. Can't be me, because I'm in here. Makes sense, right? Pretty convenient. Convenient? Convenient is Father Raminsky running an orphanage. Fox in a hen house. You have no idea what it was like in there. The playroom. Well, that's what he called it. I think he was the only one who was having any fun in there. Cops never found it? No. Well, you can go see for yourself. I'm not even sure if the orphanage is still standing. So where is he? Adam. Now? No idea. Now how can we find him? Gotta start someplace. I got a place. Where? It's not, uh... It's better if I draw you a map. You gonna draw me a treasure map? All I can do is point you in the right direction, but, uh... Nope. You got words. Use it. I kinda need to show you myself. So let's say you're telling the truth. You don't know where he is now. Sounds to me like he's left you high and dry. I know what Adam's like. The kind of places he hangs around. We could go together, check it out. Oh, you gotta give me more than that. Are you like going nowhere? I can't take it! I'm not supposed to be here! It's not supposed to go like this! Finn! Stop it! This is insane. Adam told me this wouldn't happen. He told me I'd be out by now. He promised! Let's go for this. Listen to me. I will look into this, Adam Jones, what you're saying, but even if it's true, it might be a day late and a dollar short. I'm sorry. So he's either lying or telling the truth. How to go? How do you think? Look, I know where you're going with this, and it's not gonna work. There's no way they're letting Finn out. It's too flimsy. I know. That's not what I'm after. Then why bring me out here? If you tell the judge about Adam Jones, maybe he'll grant Finn a temporary release and help the cops track down Jones. Lana, 
It's too late. It could lead to an appeal. All we're doing is delaying the inevitable. Adam Jones is reasonable doubt, Felicity. Not enough to overturn. Finn is not a good man. But if he dies, and you didn't do everything in your power to make sure he is the trapper, could you live with yourself? Yeah. Let's try and get him out. Right. Let's take it to Judge Vanstone, see what happens. Thank you, Felicity. Don't thank me yet. Thank you so much for seeing me so quickly. Miss Petty already filled me in on this whole Adam Jones business. Yes, sir. Uh, I just spoke with Mr. Finn. Now, in my experience, you light a candle under a man's ass, you can fly a balloon out of his mouth. Sir? Are you buying his story? The timing is certainly convenient, but I think he's telling the truth. Or at least some version of it. So far, it adds up. Has anyone spoken to Jones? He's been presumed dead for years. Well, that's quite a stretch, don't you think? Well, even if Jones exists, how can you be sure Finn can track him down? There's no way to know unless we try, sir. You're full of surprises, Miss Graves. Well, if you were in my position, what would you do? If you grant Finn a single day release under armed guard, we may save an innocent man from wrongful execution. I see. All right, Miss Graves. I'm going to grant Jonathan Finn a temporary release into police custody. But only for three hours, no more. Thank you. Hey, Lana, you're not going to believe this. He actually went for it? Surprised the heck out of me. Wow. <laughs> nice work, Felicity. Don't call me that. Um, I'm gonna <laughs> head over to Homicide and let him know. Good call. And Felicity. Thank you. Don't thank me yet. Outrageous. Case against Finn was air goddamn tight. Nailed him with a hostage, for Christ's sake. Had to be one hell of a tale for you to go and spin the judge's head around. I'm sorry to spring this on you. We all want the same thing. A man is about to be put to death, and we need to make sure he deserves it. Oh, Jonathan Finn deserves it. Of that, I am sure. Who exactly was Adam Jones? Did he come up at all during the investigation? Uh-huh. There was an Adam Jones at the orphanage. But you know what? Sorry fucker was killed in the fire that shut the place down. So the story kind of ends there. Finn's got impeccable timing. You don't think he's full of it? I think... I think there's something there. Judge thinks so too. He's granting a temporary release into police custody to help find Adam Jones. Finn tells me Rominski had a secret room at the orphanage, called it the playroom. It's where he held his extracurricular activities. Does that sound familiar? I remember something like that. I didn't come out in the report. I was wondering, uh, Mr. Hillary, so when you analyzed the bodies of the trapper's victims, did you find anything that might suggest there could be another suspect? Gosh, that was five years ago. I would... I don't think so. So no reason to suspect anyone but Finn? I do recall only, you know, submitting a partial analysis of the evidence because Mr. Finn confessed, so it seemed open and shut. So there was more evidence left to analyze? Well, yeah, trace signatures. Do you have access to all that data? Now just hold on a goddamn second. How can you even entertain the idea of letting this scumbag out of his cell? Finn had motive. He went through hell at Las Palmas. He hated the police. We even found his hair at another crime scene. The RV park, right? That was the social worker. And, uh, Detective Mark, would you mind walking me through that night again? I'll walk you through it in two words. Missed opportunity. 
could have had Finn in handcuffs right then and there. I didn't ask for a running commentary, Calvary. I think the record is clear. Detective Marnie showed extreme bravery in a difficult situation. If you don't mind, I'd like to hear what happened from you. At least you were actually there. Uh, sure. Catherine Hope was a social worker at Las Palmas Orphanage. We didn't know Finn had her. We got a 10-8 at Hog Haven Trailer Park out by the highway. A break-in in progress. I was closest to the scene, so I went solo. Should have been a piece of cake, but that night everyone was on pins and needles because the trapper was raising cane. And any one of us could have been next. this to you? I... I was in the bar. I... I don't know. I woke up here. Oh, God. Please, help me. Please. What's happening? wasn't the kind of thing to repeat. Ben must have seen you coming. Got out before finishing the job. Yeah, split so quick he left his gear behind. How did Finn get away? I tried to lock down the perimeter, but Finn was long gone by the time backup arrived. So how did you link Finn to the scene? I discovered that Mr. Finn had left a hair at the scene. We ran the DNA through our criminal database, and he came up as the match. He was already in the system. Finn had been in and out of the station so many times, he practically had a door with his name on it. When we got the tip uh, that he'd been spotted at a squat, he just happened to be driving by. She just seems to fall in your lap, Detective. At least I caught him. Uh oh Mama Bear's got a temper. Watch out. I'm sorry, Detective, but your attitude is not helping. I'm sorry. Last I checked, this was my case. And I got my guy convicted. 
Who the fuck are you to question my competency? I'm a district attorney. Are you finished? The Trapper case shook everyone up. I think we've poured enough salt in all our own wounds for one night. Sergeant. I think that about covers it. Anything else we can help you with? All right, I've heard enough. Thank you, everyone, for hearing me out. And thank you for eating up our entire afternoon with this shit. Hey, Graves. Yeah? I just wanted to say that Calvary's a dick. Yeah. Don't worry about it. You were really helpful. See you later, Detective Marnie. Oh, a rat trap. Target number one, Rupert Walsh, local undertaker, drunk, no apparent connection to Las Palmas orphanage. After the murder, the trapper rigged a shotgun to the motel door and the first responding officer was killed. Second target, Frederick LeMay, orderly at Las Palmas, drug charges, assaults, but no convictions. Trapper left his body in a pitch black room and filled the light fixture with C4. First responding officer flipped the switch and sayonara. Third target, Father Rominski. The trapper had sewn explosives inside his body wired to blow if he moved a muscle. Left him sitting in a prayer position and he was forced to confess his sins, namely the abuse he and his cronies conducted at the orphanage. The first responder was, huh, it was Sergeant Teller. A theory. While the first target had no apparent connection to Las Palmas, all the responding officers were from the third precinct, including Detective Marnie. Were the initial victims just a smokescreen? And the real targets, the third precinct police? Why would he target them? Contacts. Who would you like to call? Becky Marnie. Call me Becky Marnie. Hi, Detective Marnie. This is Felicity Graves. Hi. Hi, I'm so sorry for calling so late, but I've just been going over the case files, and... Do you mind if I run a theory by you? Sure. Hit me. Well, I noticed that all of the first responders were from the third precinct, including yourself. And do you think it's possible that the real targets in each of the Trapper killings were actually the first responding officers? I... I suppose it's possible. Well, I'm not trying to accuse the cops of anything, and I know you were one of the responders, too. So that's kind of why I was wondering if there might be something there, some grudge. You knew the other cops, right? Do you know if there's any reason to think that Finn might have targeted them? Honestly, I could think of a million reasons. I was in the third precinct, sure, but I got out of there as soon as I could. How do you mean? The place was a hellhole. At least back then. Drugs, bribes, you name it. Those were not good guys. Still? A lot of it cleaned up pretty soon after the travel killings. Interesting. Okay, well, thank you. You've been very helpful, Detective Marnie. No problem. And call me Becky. Thank you, Becky. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe for more.